China will soon become a significant player in the energy market and ultimately the region's energy capital, thanks to government's plan for a combination of energy sources that includes solar, wind, hydropower and natural gas. As advancements continue in the procurement and the contracting of engineering firms for major hydropower and natural gas energy transitions, the portion of the mix that includes solar energy has already picked up steam. Solar energy refers to technologies which convert the sunlight into electrical energy, mainly through photovoltaic panels. To grasp a better understanding of solar energy, we spoke with the Chief Executive Officer of the Ghana Energy Agency, GEA, Dr. Mahinder Sharma. Guyana has been advancing an energy matrix that includes natural gas, hydropower, solar and wind. On the solar front, we have awarded a contract to construct two solar farms, one at Lethem and one at Bartica. The Lethem one is completed. Within the two years, it is operational. And my last check on it, um, after being commissioned early August 2022, was that it had already displaced some 40,000 liters of diesel, which is about 266 barrels. So within that period, within about a month, um, we have already displaced quite a bit of diesel in relation to that singular solar farm, and that's just one megawatt. Coming on the heels of that, we are going to be commissioning in October another solar farm at 1.5 megawatt at Bartica. This solar farm um, will displace about 4,500 barrels of diesel every year and will avoid the use of fossil fuels to that extent. We are about to award a third solar farm for Madia, 0.65 megawatts, and that project should be completed within 18 months of signing the contract. Beyond that, government has advanced a number of initiatives at the community level, looking at solar mini-grids. So these are tinier solar farms, per se, um, that are providing PV power from energy from the sun along with battery storage, because these are meant for communities that are remote and too distant from the grid to be economically connected. So we create a little mini grid utilizing solar to provide that energy. We've already completed nine of these mini grids and by the end of this year we'll complete another 19 mini grids servicing some 206, 230 government buildings um, providing about 0.6 megawatt in total from that technology. Headlining today's newspaper is, is the signing of a 33 megawatt solar installation. Um, G, the utility GPL, Guyana's local utility, is going to be installing 33 megawatts of solar um, across a number of sites to reduce their own energy costs. Right now, at the current cost of fuel, the cost of generation from fossil fuels, from heavy fuel oil, is about 20 US cents per kilowatt hour. And consumers are paying about 30 US cents per kilowatt hour. It is important that we reduce the cost of electricity to consumers, reduce the cost of generating that electricity, and also deriving environmental benefits. Because when you displace fossil fuels with that of renewable energy sources, you're avoiding those harmful emissions of carbon dioxide and NOx and SOx and all those other elements that contribute negatively to the environment from fossil fuels. So there is a social and economic and an environmental, there are social, economic and environmental benefits that come along with all of them. So solar PV, solar photovoltaic technology, is one technology that allows us to convert the sun's energy into electricity, but you can also convert the sun's energy into thermal energy, heat. And many users are, are enjoying hot showers now, and if we can integrate more solar water heaters into our homes, 
we are certainly reducing the use of fossil fuels that would have otherwise been used to generate that electricity for us. We've also been working with communities on solar dryers, which is capturing the sun's energy and drying fruits, vegetables for, for small businesses, for export markets. So those are important um, contributions to the mix and the opportunities for solar technology. The private sector is an important partner in all of this. The solar farms that we are constructing are being done through EPC contracts, engineering, procurement and construction con contracts, that is forging partnerships between foreign and local companies too. The one that is being done at Bartica and Lethem is, is, is Farfan and Mendes and Soventix. And so every time we do a tender, there's an opportunity for private sector participation. Very soon, you will have the 33 megawatts that, that was announced in today's media um, looking at an EPC opportunity again for private sector participation. And when we do our budget in 2023 and we have more solar programs to do, those will be equal opportunities for private sector participation. First of all, the technology that is available. The utility is piloting a grid feed-in mechanism. So if I put a solar panel on my home, the energy that comes from the solar I use in my home and any excess energy goes to the utility. The utility is currently piloting a mechanism to allow the consumer to get a credit from that energy from solar. So immediately, private sector, residential households, businesses, I think the business community has significant opportunity to benefit from this because the solar cycle follows the business cycle. The sun rises about the same time you open your business and peaks about the same time. So it's a, it's a good match. In terms of the opportunity for business, it presents a, a, a forum for private sector to engage government, for private sector to participate in EPC contracts, for there to be collaboration. The 33 megawatt solar farm is one such opportunity. We have, um, we're working on the Leguan solar farm and we're hoping to have more interest in that regard. Our advancement in finding energy solutions has attracted the praise of several government officials in countries across the region. One such territory is Barbados, where Senior Minister of Infrastructure, Dr. William Dugit, during a visit to Guyana, posited that President Ali's recent bilateral conversation with the United States of America is a huge step forward, not just for Guyana, but for the entire Caribbean region. For President Ali to seek to get the best deal he can for energy investment for Guyana, and by extension for the wider Caribbean, is a major step forward for the people of Guyana and for the people of the Caribbean. These are significant steps in providing Guyanese with an energy mix forms a part of the PBBC government's drive to provide a safer, cleaner and more reliable energy to citizens across the country.